This webinar provides an overview of FDM 213, Modern Roundabouts, and I'm your presenter, Paul Hires. This chapter was significantly reorganized and also expanded to include national best practices that the department has adopted. The information contained within this chapter was also used as a basis for roundabout design training provided a number of times during 2018. Here is the layout of the reorganized chapter illustrated by a screen capture of the bookmarks. FDM 213.3 through 213.7 provide new information to the chapter. Other sections carry over from the 2018 FDM, but may also include some additional information or edits. FDM 213.1 and 213.2 provide short discussions on roundabout evaluations and the operational analysis. Key points for these sections are listed on the slide. The three-step evaluation of the roundabout alternative is still required. However, for the 2019, the Intersection Control Evaluation, or ICE, may substitute for the process outlined in FDM 116. Although HCS 7 and SIDRA are both acceptable software packages for operational analysis, HCS 7 is the preferred. The third bullet is an important message given during the roundabout training. Provide only the lanes that are warranted through the traffic operational analysis. Do not include unwarranted bypass lanes. Last point. For multi-lane roundabouts, consider building a single lane if it will provide acceptable service for 10 to 15 years or first resurfacing cycle. Here is the list of subsections for FDM 213.3, illustrated by a screen capture of the bookmarks. This section begins with a general discussion of roundabout features, including the proper use of chicaning. Chicaning should be used only to the extent necessary to establish the splitter island and create an offset left alignment. There are requirements for the inclusion of tangents between the reverse curves as well. FDM 213.3.1 introducing the geometry to be used on high speed approach. As shown in this example, Notice how the chicaning provides width for the splitter island and creates an offset alignment. FDM 213.3.2 discusses the benefits and desire for an offset left alignment. FDM 213.3.3 provides guidance on the allowable intersection angle between two roadways. FDM 213.3.4 expresses a desire to have a flat profile through the roundabout. This will allow the circulatory roadway to slope to the outside all the way around the roundabout. It is understood that this is not always possible. FDM 213.3.5 provides requirements for the splitter island, the width and the length. These are adopted from NCHRP 672 and placed in this section as hard criteria. FDM 213.3.6 provides a minimum roadway width of 15 feet, measured face-to-face -face of the curb. Also provide enough pavement to keep the design vehicle off of the gutter pan. FDM 213.3.7 provides guidance on lane widths within the circulatory roadway. These are most often based on the need of the design vehicle movements. FDM 213.3.8 adopted details for the truck apron. This is not changed from the 2018 FDM. Following the geometric design section are four sections shown here that are various performance checks. This assures that a good design is achieved. The natural path of a vehicle is the path that it will take based on the speed and orientation imposed by the geometrics. Path overlap occurs when the natural paths of vehicles in adjacent lanes overlap or cross one another. 
It is most common on entry, but also can occur on the exit. Spiral transitions enable vehicles to reach the intended exit without the need to change lanes. One of the golden rules of good roundabout design is never require lane changing within the circulatory roadway. Do not use a spiral transition unless it is clearly warranted. Fastest path checks assure that the appropriate entering and travel speeds are achieved. This is critical for both safety and operational performance. The natural path, shown here in this diagram, is illustrated also by some drone video of Hunt Brothers. This drone video illustrates the natural path that a vehicle will take. The fastest path is the smoothest, flattest path possible for a passenger vehicle to traverse through the roundabout. The fastest path is the theoretical attained speed based on the geometrics of the roundabout. A CAD-based procedure for conducting fastest path analysis has been adopted by the department. A link to the fastest path tools is provided on the FDM webpage. Swept path diagrams are typically generated using AutoTurn. AutoTurn is a CAD-based vehicle turning program. Swept path diagrams assure that there is adequate pavement to keep the design vehicle on the pavement and off of the curb. The design vehicle is typically a WB62FL, but a smaller vehicle can be selected for certain conditions. These last five sections are mostly the same information that was contained in the 2018 FDM, but does include a change for bicycle accommodation. FDM 213.8.2 now includes standard details for bicycle ramps. This section also specifies the required use of directional indicators. This is similar to the detectable warning map, but uses long, elongated bars that provide a tactile cue for visually impaired pedestrians. And that concludes this short webinar.